for the ones who are not here, I'm gonna share the screen or to start our class. Uh, I think the last, the last uh, section, this one, the old kingdom, we're talking about the old kingdom. Yes, it was the last uh, slide we were, we were studying. Uh, last time we're talking about the Egyptian and the, the pyramids and the Egyptian built temples to God all over the kingdom. Okay, now let's continue then. Uh, now, examples of the different God and goddess of ancient Egypt. I think the, the most, the most well known is uh, the, El Dios Ra, Ra, del Sol. Mire que el cuerpo de un ser humano, a human body. Y como un eagle, right? Eh, este también se parece a Horus, también se parece de un cuerpo como de un águila. La otra diosa del amor, Isis. Eh, el dios de la sabiduría, Hot. Este parece, no, este, como, este parece como un lagarto. Parece como un lagarto. Y este, este es el más conocido. Anubi. El dios del underworld. El underworld es el infierno. Anubis. Mire que este es como un lobo. Él tiene una cabeza como de un lobo, pero es un chacal. Un chacal negro. Un chacal. Ah, sí, un chacal. Nada de chacalito, nada de eso. Nada de chacal, nada de eso. Un chacal. Es, un, es una especie... De... Chacal es como, como un lobo, es como un lobo. ¿Ya? Aquí creo que es en Europa que están. En, acá en, en América no hay... Jackals, ya. Yeah. Así que este va a ser, no sé, de la fertilidad, la protección. Ok, estos son los más conocidos, ya. Yeah. Ok, let's move on then. Let's move on and let's uh, go. Remember, they always, they, they believe that there is a life after life. Ok. Ellos pensaban que había una vida después de la vida, y que esa vida después de la vida era una vida de felicidad. De acuerdo con ellos, las creencias de ellos, ok, that, that was the beliefs of the Egyptian. Okay, much of Egyptian religion focus on the afterlife. The Egyptian believed that the afterlife was a happy place, como digo, un lugar feliz. Painting from Egyptian tombs show the afterlife as an ideal world, como un mundo ideal, fantástico, where all the people are young and healthy. Ahora bien, miren esta parte, the Egyptian believe in the Afterward, steam from their ideas of a ka. Ka es como, como, como un espíritu. El ka que uno tiene en el cuerpo es un espíritu, ¿ok? Of a person, person life force, of, or a person's life force. Una, una, una fuerza de, de, la, de la persona que tiene dentro. When a person die, sorry. When a person die, his or her ka, su alma, su alma, su espíritu, left the body y se convierte en un espíritu, no es su alma. Eso quiere decir que Ra es un alma. La alma se convierte en un espíritu. ¿Ya? Ra es como el alma y el alma se, cuando muere se convierte en un espíritu. Now, the, the, the K, ahora es esta otra. El K, el K. Digo, el K. El K remains linked to the body. O sea que permanece conectado con el cuerpo. El, el alma. ¿Ya? And could not leave it y no puede abandonar el sitio de donde es enterrado, the burial site. However, he had all the same needs that the person had when he or her lives. Por eso que lo enterraban con toda su pertenencia, con su cama, con su joya, con su ropa, que a veces lo enterraban con dos, con dos esclavos que lo va a ayudar en la, la próxima vida. Esas eran las creencias, chicos. To fulfill the ka, para completar el alma, el, el, el ka que era el alma, por eso needs, la necesidad del alma, people fill tombs, llenaba las tumbas with objects for the afterlife, para, para que lo usara en el, la vida después de la vida. Estos objetos include furniture, que son furniture, son los muebles, clothing, ropa, eh, tools, eh, herramientas, jewelry, eh, sus joyas y weapons para defenderse por si acaso lo iban a matar nuevamente y ya estaba muerto. <risa> Ese fue un chiste, ríanse. Now, existence, now. Aquí hay tres cositas importantes. El K, acuérdense que era el espíritu. El, 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 el Ba, aparentemente, es cuando uno nace, 
en el cuerpo del entra es el bal. Dice, características, las personal, características personales de una persona cuando entra, cuando nace. Aquí está. Enter body at birth. Cuando uno nace, ellos pensaban que había un alma que entraba y ese se llamaba el ba. Cuando va a morir, lo que salía es el ka, que era el espíritu. Y el ak, y la ak, que es la momia. Momia that would transform into a form that could exist in the afterworld. Ya, era la momia. El ak, ak, es la momia. Entonces, ahora vamos a ver un, un video sobre la momia. Now, the burial place, el sitio donde lo enterraban. The Egyptian believed that a body had to be prepared. Ajá, lo preparaban. ¿Para qué? Para, para que no se descompusiera el cuerpo. For the afterlife before it could be placed in a tomb. Antes de ser enterrado en la tumba. To keep the cat, para mantener el cat, cuál es el alma, from suffering, para que no sufra. The Egyptian developed a method called embalming. Embalming, que es un embalsam, embalsam, embalsamar, que le sacan todos los órganos de adentro y le ponen ciertos químicos para que se preserve su cuerpo eh, lo mejor posible. To preserve the body and keep them from decaying. Y que, lo, que evite que se vaya, que se descomponga. The, the Egyptian pres, preserve body as mummies. Ajá, aquí vienen los mummies. Acuérdense que los mummies que lo, 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 lo envuelven todo una cinta. ¿Ya? Ok, the body is wrapped, the body wrapped in clothes for the afterlife. Lo envuelven en una, una tela. Embalming preserved the dead body for many, 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 many years. Okay. Now, let's talk about the pyramids. Acuérdense que la pirámide era como una especie de la tumba donde, donde ponían a todas estas grandes personalidades, a los faraones, a, los, a las personas de importantes. Eso era lo que iban aquí adentro de estos, de estos pyram pyramids. Okay. Now, pyramids were built as a huge tomb. For Egyptian pharaoh. Para eso eran construidas lo que? Los, las tumbas. The Egyptian believed that the burial sites, especially royal tombs, o sea, de los faraones, were very important. As a result, they built spectacular monuments in northern Africa in which to bury their rulers. The most spectacular of all were the pyramid huge stone tombs with Four triangle shape side. Cuatro, cuatro lados. Uno, dos, tres y cuatro. Cuatro lados triangulares. ¿Ok? Y que tiene un punto y, y, que, y que lleva un... Y se juntan al final y forman un, el top. Que es una, una punta que dirige hacia dónde? Hacia el cielo. The Egyptian first built pyramids during the Old Kingdom. En, la, en esta época de Old Kingdom fue la primera que construyeron las pirámides, chicos. ¿Ok? En la primera... En the Old Kingdom. Now let's move on and let's see what's next here. Aha, aquí está la pirámide, esta es una de las pirámides más conocidas, que es de Giza, la pirámide de Giza, que la construyeron para quién? Para el rey Khufu, el, el faraón Khufu. The largest example of this architecture is the Great Pyramid of Khufu near the town of Giza. It's covered more than 13 acres. At its base, and stands 481 feet high, 481 pies de altura. Mm. ¿Qué tamaño sería eso? Mm. No tengo idea. Okay, now, like all the pyramids, it's an amazing reminder of Egyptian scientific contribution and engineering. The use of science and math to help people. For example, the designer of a great pyramid Khufu used a mathematical formula that is still being used millennia later. Mucha matemática para hacer ese tipo de, de estructura. Tienen que ser tremendos ingenieros. Building the pyramids. Historians are not sure how the, how the Egyptians built the pyramids. No saben todavía, ni siquiera. No se explica mucho. Hay muchas teorías que dicen que de repente fueron unos extraterrestres que trajeron eso. Todavía no se sabe. En realidad no hay, no hay evidencia, chicos. What is the certain is that such enormous project required a huge labor force. As many as 100,000 trabajadores. Imagínense, 100,000 trabajadores para poder construir eso. Workers may have been needed. ¿Pudieron haber... ¿Cuánto, cuánto duró esa construcción? A single pyramid. ¿Cómo dices? ¿Cuánto duró esa construcción? ¡Uh! ¿Quién sabe? <risa> esa es muy buena esa pregunta. Dice, for years, 
scholars or estudiosos have deba debated how the Egyptians move the massive stone. Como ellos pudieron mover todas esas grandes rocas para poder construirla y subirla y formar eso, ¿ok? Dice, but some believes, unos piensan, some believe that during the night flowing, en la, en la, cuando había las inundaciones del Nilo, dice, los builders, los constructores floated, hacían que flotaran las, las rocas, ¿cómo? No sabemos, downstream, río abajo, directly to the construction site, directamente a la, al sitio donde estaba construyendo. Most historians believe that workers used bricks, ladrillos, ramp, eh, especie de, de, de rampas, rampas en forma de ladrillo, a strong slides, como para como unas como rebaladeras, to drag, para poder jalar las grandes piedras de las pirámides once they are there. ¿Ok? Mire, mire, mire esto, mire, imagínense. Eso es, de esa manera, mire cómo cortaban, mire aquí cómo, ahí se me fue, cómo cortaban un pedazo de roca y lo jalaban, y mire dónde lo ponían, en una especie de rielecito y lo comenzaban a empujar aquí, mira, comenzaban, mira acá abajo, ¿eh? lo comenzaban pues, y lo llevaban hasta allá, y allá lo subían por esta rampa, mira, aquí. hacían la misma, la misma técnica, con esta, con esta rodita aquí, la ponían aquí y lo iban jalando, lo iban jalando y lo llevaban hasta, hasta que llevaban aquí y acá lo empujaban. O sea, eso es una cantidad de personas, imagínense, mire, uh, por eso que sea, se supone que se deben ser cientos y cientos de personas trabajando a la vez. ¿Ve? Ok. ¿Cuál es el significado de los pirámides, chicos? Significance of pyramids. A burial in a pyramid demonstrate a pharaoh's importance. O sea, que era algo muy importante, el faraón, por eso que crearon eso. This size of shape of the pyramids were symbolic to ancient Egyptians. Pointing to the sky. Acuérdense que al final tiene una punta, apuntando hacia el, hacia el cielo. The pyramid was an icon, un icono that symbolized the pharaoh's journey to the afterlife. The Egyptians wanted to promise to be spectacular because they believed that the pharaoh, as their link to the gods, control everyone's life. Making the pharaoh's spirit happy was a way to ensure one's own happy afterlife. Si se iba el pharaoh contento, quiere decir que todos los que iban a estar en la tierra cuando morían también iban a estar contentos. Por eso que hacían todo lo que hacían con los faraones. Muy bien, chicos. Vamos a ver los videos, que es la parte interesante que yo quería ponerse más con los chicos. Vamos a ver los videos. Vamos a ver, tengo aquí tres videos. Vamos a buscar primero el de los momis. Cómo ellos, cómo, cómo creaban las momis. ¿Ya? Vamos a ver. This is a mummy of a young man named Heraclides. He died in Egypt in the first century AD when he was about 20 years old. Mummification was developed by the ancient Egyptians to preserve the body for the afterlife. Typically, all internal organs were removed before mummification with the exception of the heart. But in this case, the heart was removed and the lungs were left intact. Next, the body was covered with salt and left for about 40 days until all moisture was eliminated. Perfumed oils and plant resins were rubbed on the body. Thick layers of resin were applied to glue the strips of linen that were wrapped around the body. The mummy was placed on a wooden board and more wrappings bound them together. A mysterious pouch, perhaps of religious significance, was placed on the chest. A mummified ibis, a wading bird with a slender, down-curved bill, was placed on the abdomen. Ibis mummies commonly served as votive offerings to the gods, but this is an unusual case of a bird being mummified with a deceased human. Long linen strips further secured the wrappings. A portrait panel of Heraclides was placed over the face. A large linen cloth was wrapped around the mummy. The shroud was painted red with an imported lead-based pigment. This treatment is rare, 
very few red shroud mummies are known to exist. Egyptian symbols of protection and rebirth were painted on the outer cloth with pigments and gold. Finally, Heraclides' name was written in Greek at the feet. Thanks to this remarkable mummification process, Heraclides' body is with us today. Muy bien, vimos cómo se hacían las momias, chicos. Muy interesante, nunca lo había visto. Y ha durado tantos años. Ajá, very interesting. Now let's, let's see this one that talks about the great pyramids. Uh, how they, I think it's how they did it. It says the great pyramid, Mr. Saul. Jean-Pierre approached the mystery of the great pyramid with an architect's eye. Working from the most detailed architectural plans ever drawn of the Great Pyramid, slowly his theory began to evolve. As the years passed, unnoticed by Egyptologists, he came to know the minute details of the pyramid like no one else on Earth. The $64,000 question is, how do you raise blocks all the way to the top of a 480-foot pyramid? We saw that there were real problems with either a single ramp or a spiral ramp. And lifting cranes certainly don't do the job. So how do you do it? That's the problem Jean-Pierre has been tackling for all these years. His solution still has a ramp, but it's inside the pyramid. And incredibly, according to Jean-Pierre, it's been hidden there for 4,500 years. He calculated that the slope of this ramp had to be about 7% so the men could haul the blocks up it. He also figured the ramp would have to start at the base of the pyramid and go upwards as the pyramid grew. It's not as easy as it sounds. Remember, the pyramid is not solid. Inside the Great Pyramid are three large chambers. The lowest one is called the Queen's Chamber. Above it is a mysterious room called the Grand Gallery. And on top of all that is the King's Burial Chamber. All three chambers are connected by passageways. Is it possible to have a ramp snaking up through the pyramid that doesn't run into one of these chambers or passageways? As he began building his computer model, he could see the ramp just 10 feet inside the smooth outer surface of the pyramid, turning level after level all the way to the top of the pyramid. Kind of like a ramp in a parking garage. Amazingly, Jean-Pierre's ramp never hit any of the chambers or passageways inside the Great Pyramid. For the first time in history, a structural 3D model of the Great Pyramid had been built to test a theory. Jean-Pierre knew the internal ramp was a real possibility. But he still had problems to solve. How to turn the blocks around the corners of the ramp? You see, the men hauling the blocks need a place to stand in front of the blocks. When they reach the end of the straightaway on the ramp, where can they stand to pull the block? Jean-Pierre's solution is to leave the corners open. At the end of each length of the ramp, a notch, about 30 feet square, would have been left open. This notch let in light and fresh air, but it had an even more important function. Stationed at each corner was a crane that would lift and position the block so it could travel up the next flight of the ramp. These cranes could be the machines that Herodotus was talking about. But like any good detective story, we've been saving the best for last. If Jean-Pierre is right about the internal ramp, the French team should have detected it in their 1980s high-tech survey. In the French team's published report, there is no diagram of an internal ramp. It looks like Jean-Pierre is wrong. Surely a study this sophisticated would have found evidence of something as large as an internal ramp. But 15 years after the study, 
Jean-Pierre was asked to meet a member of the French team who said he had some very good news for him. Dr. Bouy had heard about Jean-Pierre's theory and wanted to show him something. A diagram that the French didn't fully understand, so they never published it. Voilà. C'est incroyable. This computer printout shows a low-density spiral shape inside the Great Pyramid. It's amazingly close to Jean-Pierre's drawing of the internal ramp. So years before Jean-Pierre's theory, the French may have found evidence of an internal ramp inside the Great Pyramid. Very good, very interesting. So there's a ramp inside. Yeah. So that way they, they build the pyramids. I have another one, but I don't think I'm... Let's see this one. Let's see very short. What is, life after what is the life? ancient Egyptian afterlife like? And why do the ancient Egyptians put so much effort into getting there? In this video, you'll learn the three things that you need to know to understand what the ancient Egyptian afterlife was like and why you'd want to be there. Welcome to Voices of Ancient Egypt, where we demystify the words and lives of the ancient Egyptians through animated videos like this one. If you're new here, I'd love to have you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss future videos like this one. The ancient Egyptians had what might seem to us very strange and complex beliefs about what life after death was like and how to prepare for it. So what was the point of it all? The point was, in fact, not to obsess over death, but rather to overcome it and be able to live on forever in what we now call the afterlife. But what was the ancient Egyptian afterlife actually like? Let's jump into the three things that you need to know about the ancient Egyptian afterlife to understand why they spent so much time and money preparing for it. Number one, there was no one single accepted idea of what the afterlife was like. This might seem like the weirdest part of all, but the ancient Egyptians had many different interpretations and ideas about religious concepts such as the afterlife. Okay, let's stop right here because uh, I need to talk something with you guys. Uh, there's a lot of video about the Egyptian guys, so you.